Today on the newscast, with Hamas targeting Jerusalem, we're in God's one and only holy city to meet two men who are turning a biblical mandate into a global movement. That's next. Folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. It's been one year since Hamas launched its May 2021 war against Israel. Now, you may remember that the Iran-backed terror group started that conflict by firing a barrage of rockets in the direction of Jerusalem. What followed was 11 days of fighting that Hamas dubbed its Sword of Jerusalem operation. Now, Israel severely weakened Hamas during that war, yet Hamas was still able to fire over 4,300 rockets at Israeli cities and towns. The May 2021 war was preceded by violent riots atop the Temple Mount in Jerusalem that were instigated by, you guessed it, Hamas. Fast forward one year to today, and we have a very similar situation. Hamas recently used the Muslim holy month of Ramadan to incite unrest on the Temple Mount once again, with rioters launching attacks against Israeli police and civilians. Hamas bills itself as the defender of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which sits atop the Temple Mount and is considered the third holiest site in Islam. Although the mosque and the Dome of the Rock are there today, the Temple Mount was once home to the first and second Jewish temples, as described in the Bible. It's the holiest site in Judaism and also very important to Christians. Remember, the second temple is where Jesus taught and chased out the money changers, and the first temple, built by King Solomon, is where the Bible says God's divine presence and the Ark of the Covenant once dwelt. Yet Muslim authorities control the site today, and Jews are not permitted to pray there. Nevertheless, Hamas leaders claim that Israel is desecrating the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and at least 19 Israelis have been murdered in a recent terror wave that began on March 21st and has largely been spurred on by Hamas over its Jerusalem claims. Folks, in these prophetic times in which we are living right now, Jerusalem will increasingly command the world's attention, and nowhere more than the Temple Mount, which is the most coveted piece of real estate in the world. As believers, we have a biblical mandate to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I sat down in God's city recently with two men who take that mandate so seriously that they've started a global movement based on it. Let's head now to Jerusalem and my conversation with Albert Vexler and Robert Ilatov, the men behind the upcoming Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast and a series of events worldwide dedicated to building a prayer movement for Israel's ancient and ancestral capital. Take a look. Albert, Robert, great to have you with us here in Jerusalem. And in this city, very soon, we will have yet another Jerusalem prayer breakfast, one of my favorite events every year here in Israel. Albert, you're the director of this event. Tell us a little bit about what we'll be doing here in Jerusalem in just a few short weeks. Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast is gathering the people from all the nations to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, not only to Israel, but to 15 cities all around the world. Yeah. You've been bringing the nations to Jerusalem with these prayer breakfasts, and you've been bringing uh, Jerusalem to the nations, I would say, gentlemen. Look, we had a great one recently in Dallas. Senator Ted Cruz was there, Robert. Uh, Greg Abbott, the Texas governor. You're a former Knesset member. Tell us how you got involved in what I would call a movement, the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast. Seven years ago, Albert came to my office and said, uh, Robert, we have to do something. Uh, we, we need the National Prayer Breakfast. I said to him, you are crazy. We Which are, we have in America, are, by the way. We, have the every we are not the Christian country. We are Jewish country. So we uh, go home and think about it, how we can do uh, people together, Christians and Jews. And after the week, uh, one week, he came uh, back and said, you know, uh, we can pray for uh, Jerusalem. We can make a Jerusalem prayer breakfast. So from uh, this uh, point, we started working and uh, I went to uh, president office and uh, the chairman of Knesset office and uh, all the members of Knesset and uh, mm -hmm. we spoke with all almost all uh, the members of the Knesset and uh, 
uh, we explained them that uh, this is the important thing to do uh, to uh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And gentlemen, there's nothing like praying for Jerusalem in Jerusalem. In a few weeks, we will have the prayer breakfast, as I mentioned, right here, Albert. You'll be there, Robert, you'll be there. Michelle Bachman and some other very familiar faces. Tell us about who else is involved in this movement, the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast. We are expecting the newly elected president of uh, Hungary, uh, Katalin Novak, high officials that are coming from European countries, uh, members of parliament, and um, uh, we're expecting people to come from US Congress. Every year, we have been able to um, bring uh, people that love uh, Israel love Jerusalem. This year, Nick Vucic uh, is planning to come and join us. So this will be yeah. a very, very unique event in Waldorf Astoria, hotel yeah. right in the very heart of uh, uh, Jerusalem. Beautiful place. And then, of course, we will meet in the Knesset, given that the Knesset is uh, still functioning. Yeah. Because um, Robert can definitely give you an analysis of what is going on here, but to mm. my opinion, we are seeing a very difficult time in Israeli politics. The days of this coalition, as it is, uh, are numbered. And we really pray that we would have the coalition still intact by end of May. So then we can have the prayer breakfast and then yeah. uh, something new will happen. That's right. That's right. Robert, again, as Albert mentioned, you did serve in the Knesset here in Israel. Uh, a tumultuous time in Israeli politics. But it seems no matter who is in office, Jerusalem is eternal. Every uh, president and every member of parliament, uh, Knesset, uh, love Jerusalem. And, uh, you know, we prayed for Jerusalem 2,000 years. So uh, all about uh, Jerusalem in the Jewish world. Uh, the Zionist uh, movement uh, started. What is Zion? Zion uh, is uh, Jerusalem. This is one Just of the 70... Us. The, this is the, one of the 70 names of Jerusalem. The Zionist movement is movement for Jerusalem. Everything in our life uh, is about Jerusalem. So I uh, believe that uh, every uh, politician in Israel uh, who is a Jew and loves uh, his country will support this movement. Yeah, and more and more the world's focus is turned to Jerusalem, this city, the Temple Mount, the most coveted piece of real estate in the world. Albert, as we wrap up here, some final thoughts. Uh, this is exciting what's happening with the prayer breakfast. I truly believe it's a movement and it's gone international. As you said, what's next? Whenever Jews and Christians were able to work together or pray together, history was made. And you can, you can uh, look behind us and, and see the beautiful city of Jerusalem in uh, 1898, Herzl and Heschler, yeah. come together, then there has the Balfour Declaration, which also comes about because Chaim Weizmann, a Jew, and Arthur Balfour are working together. Name uh, Truman, yeah. who, who didn't want to meet anyone, anyone sure. to talk to him about uh, independence of Israel in 1948. But then he had a friend, a Jewish friend, Eddie Jacobson. Eddie Jacobson. And so Eddie says, you have sure. to meet with Chaim Weizmann. And you can go on and on. Billy Graham, mm. Golda Meir, there's so many stories. Truman, uh, uh, Nixon, yeah. Trump. Moving the embassy. Well, and, and there are so many people behind it. There's yeah. Christians and there are Jews that are working together. So I really believe that the, the, the idea of bringing the Jews and Christians together, and it's, it's not an easy thing. And, and Robert, you know it, and everybody knows it. And yet whenever we succeed, to work together, whenever we succeed to lay aside the differences and to, to, to even pray together, something historic is happening. And as you said, Robert, um, the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast has created an atmosphere that the rabbis and the pastors, so the Jews and the Christians can pray together and feel comfortable about it. Yeah. And so we are in great expectancy. What will this year bring? Every time we come, there's a miracle after miracle. And this is what is really exciting, what will happen yeah. on June 1st and 2nd here in Jerusalem. Derek, thank you yes. so much for helping us. We will certainly be talking here on set again. Good luck with the prayer breakfast. Something special is happening here. God is moving. It is great to see Jerusalem prayer breakfast coming June 1st and 2nd, 2022, right here in God City. Albert, Robert, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. Thanks again to Albert Vexler and Robert Ilato for their great work for Jerusalem. Folks, if you are in Jerusalem on June 1st and 2nd, I strongly encourage you to attend the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast. 
And the great thing about it is Albert and Robert are holding these events throughout the world, as he mentioned in the interview. We recently had one back in March in Dallas. There have been prayer breakfast in Estonia and other parts of the world. It is a growing movement for God City for such a time as this. If you like that interview with Robert and Albert, you want to see more like it, be sure to tune in to our weekly 30-minute Watchmen TV show on TBN. It airs tonight, every Thursday, actually, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, also Fridays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you want to get an exclusive first look at new episodes before they hit the air, you can become a Watchmen Premium member here on the channel. Just go to join on our homepage. You get a lot of nice perks when you become a premium member and exclusive first look at every new episode of The Watchmen Show, including behind the scenes commentary with yours truly. So check that out, some good stuff there. Hey, thanks so much for joining us here today on The Watchmen Newscast. Until tomorrow, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.